Hello and welcome to a new new vlog. I don't I don't, I wanted to call it a midweek vlog then, but that's not really a thing anymore. Welcome to a new vlog. Um I thought I would vlog this weekend. Well, not the whole weekend, I thought I'd vlog today and tomorrow. Today is Friday the 14th of June, which is Inside Out 2 release day. And me and Becky, there she is. Me and Becky are gonna go and watch Inside Out 2 tonight on release day at one of the local cinemas um, and tomorrow we are going to Liverpool because we managed to bag last minute Taylor Swift tickets for tomorrow night in Liverpool um, yeah so I thought do you know what this would be a good time to pick up the camera and vlog um, when I first set up our Instagram account obviously which is also called Daily Disney Girls before I started vlogging um, Disney trips and daily life and stuff. We used to go and watch Disney films that like new releases. I think Toy Story 4 was the first one that came out when I first set up the Instagram. And then we'd like go and watch it on release day and then we'd like say on Instagram what we thought of it and stuff and I thought, Do you know what? Let's go back to that. So I thought I'd vlog obviously I won't be able to vlog the film, but um I thought it'd be a good opportunity to vlog and as soon as we come out this evening or as soon as we get home pop on the camera and give our thoughts and thoughts and feelings on it won't we thoughts and feelings thoughts and feelings on it um the two of us are pretty big inside out fans obviously we're disney fans um but we're pretty big on inside out we've both just done if you're not aware we've just done a three-year degree um on childhood studies and that degree was very very much i'd probably say 70% of the content of the three years that we've just done was based on like child psychology and how children acquire language, how children acquire um, like knowledge, how play affects children's social and emotional well-being um, and all that stuff. So Inside Out is is basically all of that stuff in a children's film. So. Um, we're big Inside Out fans, and Becky also, and also Becky did her dissertation on how Disney can be used as a pedagogical pedagogical tool for children, um, which in simple terms means how Disney can be used to help teach children like certain things. And she did a whole section on social and emotional well-being and used Inside Out how Disney can be used. So. We thought it'd be right and fitting for us to go and see Inside Out 2 on the day it got released. You was quite annoyed though, wasn't you, that it wasn't out it was whilst we were still writing dissertation that came out afterwards. Yeah, um, because knowing what, like watching the trailers and stuff, we, we know the baseline that Riley's now a teenager. Yeah. And it's basically about her going through puberty and the different emotions and that, stuff. That so, come in at yeah. those ages. So it would have been really good to like evaluate how that film can also be used as well. Save that one for my masters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to go watch Inside Out 2 later. We're going to the light cinema. I've never been to a light cinema before. You have, haven't you? Yeah. With the boys that she used to nanny. Um, I've heard good things, so that'd be um, interesting to see. I did want to go... We have... Um, I don't know if these this chain of cinema is like nationwide or if it's just local to us, but I did want to originally go to the Everyman Cinema. We have one local to us, but it's so expensive. <laughs> like the tickets are like twenty twenty five pound each, um, whereas obviously you could go to like View or Odeon for like five or seven pounds each. So we're not at the moment in the financial situation where we could just whack out <laughs> twenty five quid each on a cinema ticket. Um, but yeah, so we're going to try the lights in instead because apparently that's a little bit more upmarket to like Odeon and View, but not quite as fancy as Everyman. So anyway, I'm waffling now and my battery is about to die, so I'm going to have to go. So we shall see you later when we go out. Hello, so we are now in Stockport uh, for the cinema. We don't live in Stockport, we've driven here. Um, it's like a 15, 20 minute drive, isn't it, from yeah. where we live? We actually went to uni in Stockport. Um, yeah, so we've just parked up in a multi-storey and ready to go to the light cinema to watch Inside Out. Becky's got 
um, inside out hoodie on. Is it from Shop Disney? Yeah. But it's not called Shop Disney anymore, is it? It's Disney store, but it was Shop Disney at the time. It took me ages to get my head around Shop Disney. And now, and now it's Disney store again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, hey, keeping, what is it? Keeping my, my feelings, feelings inside. inside. And it's on, the characters are on your arm. And you've got an inside out t-shirt on as well, haven't you? Underneath? Oh, yeah. Which, was that a shop, Disney? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sporting Disney Cruise Line Spirit Jersey, this one where it's got like the, what would you call this, the little tie up bit. At the front, I've not worn so many ages. And I thought I'd bring me lounge fly. The only lounge fly that I own, and I don't think I have any others, do I? I'm not really like, we're not like lounge fly collector people, but. No. Love this one. Show the back. If anyone's not seen it, that's the back. Yeah. So anyway, let's go cinema. I think it starts in 20 minutes. So we'll go and get a drink and all that jazz. When you wait till the end, just in case there's an little extra scene at the end. <laughs> right, we're back in the car. Um, we've been watching the film, we're back in the car. Apologies for this little dodgy angle that I've got going on. I've had to put you, I didn't have to, but I've put you on the dashboard of the car um, whilst we talk so I don't have to hold the camera. Um, but I have this like big screen in the middle of my car dashboard thing. Um, and no matter where I put you, like this is in the way. But this is kind of the best view. So anyway, we're back. I was gonna vlog um, us going into the cinema and um, you know, show you like what the cinema looked like and what the seats looked like, but it was absolutely packed. The The first bit that we walked into, the queue was out of the door to like get popcorn and everything. Um, and then when we got into the screen, we were like, it took us quite a while to get into the screen. So it, like the trailers and stuff had already started and the, the screen was packed as well. Like every single seat was taken. So um, yeah, I didn't get to vlog going in basically because it was just too busy and I'm not quite confident enough to vlog where it's like super packed a bit different at disney kind of people expect you to be vlogging not so much in your local cinema <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what did you think what did you think this is like literally we've just come out of the cinema got back in the car initial reaction of inside out 2 it was absolutely incredible yeah it was really, really it good. was so good better than the first i think mm, feel like you can't really come i feel like they're both really really good they are both very different and they're both they're both set in completely different time zones like inside out the original inside out is obviously based on a child a child child um and like just like learning about those basic emotions and how the brain works for a child this second one is completely based on puberty, being a teenager, mm. all those new emotions. I feel like you can't really compare them, in my opinion. I feel like they're kind no, of they, one part. They, they can't be Both compared, really good. but I do think the second one was better. It was just, it was so good. So well thought through. It was. And a very realistic representation of teenagers. Yes. Um, I think I might just... There's a few bits that I want to say that I thought were really good. So if you really want to go and see Inside Out 2 and you don't want to know any spoilers, skip. maybe yeah, skip this video to I'll put on screen now where you can skip it to. Um, however, if you're not bothered about spoilers or if you've already seen it and you want to come see our reaction, carry on watching. So <laughs> I really, really liked that they did a whole panic attack scene or anxiety attack scene. Yeah. Um, loved that. Thought that was really, really good to kind of give a perspective of what goes on inside the brain yeah. during an anxiety attack. Thought that was really good and I thought... Very realistic. Yeah. And they did it really well. Um, what else did I really like? <laughs> I liked that they had that little cameo role of um, nostalgia. Yeah, that was really Because cute. Like, I'm such a nostalgic person. I literally <laughs> said to Becky as we were just walking to the car then, I was like, I feel like nostalgia for me is the person that controls my HQ inside of my brain. Yeah. Um, I run off nostalgia and thrive off nostalgia. So I loved that 
that little character kept having a little cameo role and they were like no you're not ready yet like that was funny yeah that was really good um and for me quite realistic to i can relate to that yeah one of my favorite things was the new character on we which is boredom yeah he controlled the mood board by his phone yeah so insinuating when you're bored you're on your phone yeah i really like that little link that's becky being <laughs> analytical there <laughs> having just analyzed the first film <laughs> for a dissertation um yeah you say you feel like you didn't watch and enjoy you did enjoy the film but you found yourself analyzing the whole film yeah i analyzed because the you've whole just film. analyzed the first I one i didn't yeah i didn't like sit and enjoy it like everyone else yeah you've, you enjoyed it in a different way yeah yeah and because obviously you did a huge chunky dissertation based on inside out and how it can affect children's social social and emotional well-being you know like that they use a number of key psychologists to help them um kind of create key scenes to, so it is true to life and what actually happens inside the brain and everything and we did stay till the very end of the credits and the same psychologists that we used on the first film have been used for the second film interestingly though this is a bit geeky but <laughs> interestingly the there was only one psychologist for inside out the first one this yeah. time there was four yeah so interesting they might specialize in different different yeah there might be one of them might specialize specifically in anxiety and like yeah anxiety attacks and stuff i don't know that's just me speculating anyway um, <laughs> what else did i really like there's one thing that i'm a bit disappointed about that i was kind of when they first released the trailer for inside out 2 and well not necessarily the trailer but like teasers and stuff and it was like we found out that it was going to be set on like the teenagers and all the new emotions and i saw that they had like anxiety and all that different emotions coming in i was kind of really hoping that they would touch a little bit on neurodiversity and not necessarily that riley would be neurodiverse i didn't i wasn't expecting that but i was kind of hoping that she'd maybe make a friend make a friend or experience someone who is neurodivergent and that they'd maybe do a very small scene where they kind of dip into the neurodivergent brain to see what's different i was kind of hoping they would do that yeah and they didn't um and it, if they had done that i would have like that would have really got me <laughs> <laughs> um because i feel like that's really needed it's not really represented and I feel like that it would have, have that it would have, have really fitted good. really well, Re yeah. Especially as Riley's moving from middle school to high school, yeah. Kind of like the change from primary school to secondary yeah, school, yeah. And it's the different different people. You come, there's more understanding of yeah. different people. Yeah, I don't know what else I can say apart from it was really really good, really well thought through. And I, I think the, the central ethos of the film is is very relevant and very current for teenagers. But not even teenagers though, like older people as well, like us for yeah. example. The whole thing was about becoming yourself and finding your groove basically. Yeah, and that's the whole ethos of Disney in a way but... Well yeah but it was, <laughs> it was very clear that... Yeah. It was about becoming who you are mm. and not what these different emotions want you to or, be yeah. or expect you to be. Yeah, like when And I think that takeaway is really important. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was really good. I've literally wrote my thesis in my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was really, really good. Really enjoyed it. I feel like I want to watch it again. Like oh, yeah. straight away. Um yeah. I said well, I need to watch it another two times. Another analysing one. Another analysing one and then one that I can just enjoy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, loved it. Thought it was brilliant. Um, I would say, I feel like children under a certain age probably wouldn't get it. Probably wouldn't understand. No. It's pretty would... complex on like how the brain works. I feel like it's a little bit more complex than the first film, naturally because it's now a yeah. teenager and there is more emotions. I feel like it is obviously great to be used as a learning tool to show children that are about to approach those years but i feel like if you've got children that are like nowhere near hitting puberty yet like you know 
reception. Fiction. They'll just like reception the year one, year two. Yeah, they will like the characters, and there is some bits that they probably enjoy and follow along. But the actual whole story as a whole, understanding the story, yeah, yeah, understanding like what the story's actually portraying. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're rambling now. We both loved it. Absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah. Go watch it. Go watch it. Yeah. If you've not watched it, go and watch it. Although. And if anyone wants to read my dissertation, that's a very good grade. <laughs> <laughs> toot toot. <laughs> toot toot. Absolutely toot toot. I will say, actually, not said this on the vlog, Becky, um, obviously, mentioned earlier, she's done a dissertation on Disney uh, and how Disney can be used to help As a pedagogical children. tool to enhance the social and emotional well-being of children. Yeah. That was the title. <laughs> she... Um, found a uh, academic group of people online like a research what was it what sort of this is, is i don't this know is how so to geeky. it's pretty geeky but like if you've been to university or you understand that sort of thing it's pretty cool it's cool it's um an academic network of disney people yeah so people who research specifically topics surrounding disney so disney is always involved in their research if that makes sense it's called I can't remember what it's called um but it's basically a load of professors university lecturers uh, really high up researchers who people who would probably research topics to help as well influence some of the disney films um but yeah this like group of people and it's like worldwide it's not just based on the there's some people who are from the uk but then there's people from america and other parts of the world who are all researchers but specifically to disney yeah, Aren't they? but it's different components of of Disney. People still have different interests. Yeah, like ours is obviously well, mine is more childhood education and psychology and yeah. how Disney can influence that. Whereas I know someone who is looking at the feminist side of it. Yeah, so this group of people, they're all people predominantly with like PhDs. They've got like the doctoral title and whatnot anyway becky um found this group online and they were doing like a free webinar for people who were who were wanting to start doing research into disney uh, academic research into disney and are doing like degrees so becky joined this free webinar this was like last year yeah it was last year and they said, oh, if anyone wants to stay on the call at the very end and ask any questions, feel free. So Becky stayed on the call, asked questions. Anyway, she ended up telling this. She's a uni lecturer somewhere in the UK. I can't remember. Um, what she's doing her dissertation on and everything. Anyway, Becky got invited to talk on a conference yeah. to the University of North, North Carolina. Carolina. <laughs> about how Disney can be used as a pedagogical tool using the research that she was currently finding on a dissertation and she spoke to a virtually on Zoom, not in person, but she spoke to a lecture hall of over 500 people in North Carolina um, about how Disney can be used to teach children. Um, so, little claim to fame there. Yeah. Very proud of you and you have since finishing dissertation we've got our grades back and everything she's reached out to the doctor who's like the uk part of this group and said if you want to read it read it and she's got back literally the other day didn't she and said it's really good yeah and then we we've got a call scheduled not next week week after for what what to talk about what like what basic because obviously i'm going to do my masters yeah about how I can go a bit deeper yeah into it and how I can follow on to do my PhD from there yeah so yeah I just wanted to kind of say that on the vlog because we're very proud of you thank you very very proud of you this is somebody who doesn't want to do didn't want to do like a presentation to like the 16 people in our class <laughs> but yet did a zoom call to 500 it's people it's different in a though, I couldn't home. see them <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you've absolutely smashed it you've done really well and it's something that I like I'm passionate about and i enjoy so i mean we've been chatting now for 16 minutes 16 minutes so. 17. right we're gonna go we're gonna go get our dog from my mum and dad's house hopefully she's not eating something that she shouldn't have and she doesn't end up at the emergency vets like we did this time last, last friday <laughs>
that's do they know about story. that they don't but that's another that's story another, we'll another explain day. that one tomorrow and we shall see you tomorrow for here is today what what Good morning, it's Saturday and it is Era's tour day which sounds really weird because literally we've been trying a whole year to get tickets, <coughs> excuse me, um, accepted that we wasn't going and then on Wednesday we got tickets, so bizarre, but anyway, today we are going to Liverpool, you alright Maggie? Got to Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Stop the taking the mickey out of me. <laughs> look, Maggie, look. <laughs> um, an order love this morning. Yes. So we it's currently nearly ten o'clock, and we are going to get. We so we was going to drive to Liverpool. We've had this whole hoo ha, like how we're going to get there and back. So we spent like all of Thursday trying to work out what was the best thing to do. And at first we decided, first we looked at parking and all the parking that was close to Anfield that was left was like two to three hundred pounds. So we were like, okay, maybe driving's out of the question. Maybe we'll look at the train. So then we looked at the train from like Manchester, Piccadilly or Victoria, anyway, Manchester city centre to Liverpool Lime Street and it was like £20 each for a return ticket, like so £10 each way. So we were like, okay, we'll get the train then and then we'll make our way from, because uh, if you don't know like where Anfield is, it's it's not in the city centre, it's just outside the city centre in Liverpool. So we was going to get the train to Liverpool Lime Street for 20 quid each. And then we were thought, well, we'll get an Uber from the city centre to Anfield. And then when after the concert, trying to get an Uber will be difficult. And plus, it'll be dead expensive. So we'll just walk back to the city centre, which is just shy of an hour's walk. But we were like, I don't know how else we'll get back to the car. But that was the plan. Until last night, after we watched Inside Out, we went to my mum and dad's house on the way home to pick up Maggie. And had told them what the plan was. And my dad was like, you can't walk back to the city centre. And we were like, well, I don't know what else we can do. Because we can't get the car any closer. And we can't get the train home. Because the last train home... Um, wait, I completely skipped something out there. I was saying about getting the train and we were going to walk back to the city centre, didn't I? But it's, it's just shy of an hour. And we then realised that... The last train home is at 11.30. The concert doesn't finish till quarter past 11. Um, so we'd have 15 minutes to get out of Anfield and on a train in Liverpool Lime Street, which is a 15 minute walk. That's just not gonna happen. So we then got the train idea out of our head and we were like, we're gonna have to drive then. So then we booked a parking spot in the city centre and we were like, right, we'll drive to Liverpool, park in the city centre, we'll have some tea, in the city centre, get an Uber to Anfield and then afterwards walk back to the city centre which is just shy of an hour and then drive home. Sorry, so that was the plan. <laughs> Got confused then. That was the plan until last night I was telling mum and dad and my dad was like you can't walk back to the city centre, which we can, but in his head he was like you can't. Um, so now plan has changed, we've ended up booking the train to get us to Liverpool, which we've actually managed to get cheaper than £20 each because we've booked it from a small train station which is like local to where we live, which we didn't even realise you could get trains to Liverpool from there. Um, and it's only cost us £12 each? No, £5 each. £5.80 each, £12 in total. Yeah. Oh, £12 for the two of us? Yeah. £12 for the two of us, so £5 odd each for the train, just one way though, from here to Liverpool. Um, and then my dad is going to drive to Liverpool for the end of the concert and he's gonna pick us up and he's gonna try and get as close as possible and then we'll just try and find him. So that's the plan. <laughs> he just, I, don't, I think he just didn't want us to be walking for an hour at almost midnight around Liverpool, and out the outskirts of Liverpool into the city centre. So anyway, he's happy to drive and pick us up, so 
if you're not aware we live in manchester um and the drive from manchester to liverpool is about 40 minutes um and at that time of night you could probably do it in about 25 <laughs> if you're going fast obviously can't really speed but you can do it pretty fast we've done it fast before haven't we yeah um yeah so that's the plan so we're gonna get the train uh we put the train at half wait two o'clock yeah two o'clock is the train gets us into liverpool <coughs> just before three and yeah we're gonna go not sure where we're gonna eat but um have a little look around liverpool have some food and then go to the concert so that's the plan um i don't really know um i'd quite like to get some merch <coughs> but we're both well particularly me i'm very low on money at the minute so i can't really afford to just like spend 70 quid on a jumper or something but i feel like because we've tried to get tickets for like a whole year and then we finally got them last minute i feel like we need to get something to symbolize that we went I just can't really afford anything. So anyway, we might go and see the merch, might we, and potentially buy something. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. But it's now 10. So we need to leave. I think Joe is going to drop us off at the train station. Um, about half one-ish. And I've got no idea what I'm going to wear. People have planned outfits for like a year for this concert <laughs> and I've got no idea what I'm going to wear. We got the tickets Wednesday night and on Thursday I thought oh maybe we'll have a look. There's like an entire section on Boohoo specifically for the Eras tour which is just mind blowing that just shows how big this concert is. Um, I did have a quick look on Boohoo on Thursday night because Becky's got a pass to get like next day delivery on Boohoo and it, it does, it comes next day. Um, but I was looking and I just thought, I just don't really have the spare cash at the minute to just buy an extra outfit just for a concert. So, um, I didn't get anything new and I've got absolutely zero idea what I'm going to wear. So I think the next few hours is just going to be me staring at my wardrobe. <laughs> and probably getting frustrated feeling like I've got nothing to wear. Don't you, I feel like, don't you feel like you just end up looking at your wardrobe and just like, I've worn that like five times before, I've worn this six times before, like you just feel like you've got nothing to wear. <laughs> right, <clears throat> when I've decided what I'm going to wear I'll show you, but I don't have high expectations. I don't own anything sequined, to my knowledge. And most of my wardrobe is like spirit jerseys and leggings, so <laughs> we'll see what I conjure up. <laughs> Right, we're here. There's the stadium. I don't know if you can see that. Um, we're just walking up now. We've just got a taxi from the city centre. And off we go. So, this is the cop side, but we are literally opposite side. So, we need to walk round. 